morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome and thank you so very much for being here with all of us today. Woo! This is part two of loving living your bucket list. And we've rebranded this into love for your live list. None of us are waiting until we've been given um, a diagnosis. That means we have to have treatment and we can't possibly go and do the things that we want to do either because we're not well enough or because we're having to spend too much time um, in a hospital. So we're going to live our lists whilst we're alive and thriving and kicking. So welcome, everyone. I have um, Mayumi here helping me to manage um, the people. As you know, I'm Kim Serafini. Of course, you should know that. Unless, of course, you're brand new to our community, which I would very much highly doubt given that um, this is an invitation for Positive Prime Community members, yes, it's free, um, and I'm so glad. We've got so much to get through today, um, and it's really important, I think, that you're on the edge of your seat and you've got an energy about you. So breathe in, hold it, and breathe out. Breathe in. Maybe for the count of two, hold it for the count of four, and exhale for the count of six. In for shorter, hold for longer, and exhale for even longer, preferably in through your nose and out through your mouth. That's if you'd like to do breathing that really revitalizes you, cleanses you, refreshes you, which is, of course, important for a, a class or a gathering like this. All right, so I've got a lot of really interesting secrets, tips, hints, clues into how on earth you get to achieve more, experience more, be delighted by more, have deliciousness. Um, that's like serendipity and synchronicity playing out in your life. And I could limit it to like eight really big ideas that would be the reasons why some of your dreams, wishes, goals, hopes, desires haven't yet manifested. And so I think we'll go through those eight as we spend the next hour or so together. Um, in no particular order, because depending upon who you are, who you are, where you're at in your spiritual or personal development journey, or even in your um, life cycle, whether you're fabulous and 18 and the world is at your feet, it's an oyster. And quite frankly, there's just so much to explore. That was me. Um, I was particularly lucky I lived in London and um, North America as a young woman, having graduated from business school, but I was ambitious and driven and I was on fire and I wanted it all. And, and so, you know, it'd be Thursday night in London and I would have been exhausted from working really hard in the corporate world all week. But I think to myself, where could I go this weekend? And so I'd look for the cheapest flight on one of the bucket airlines. Um, it's actually what we used to call it. Funnily enough, it's got a real linked bucket list. Didn't make that connection back then. Anyway, it'd be like Ryanair. We had to fly out of Stansted. We'd go to Malmo in Sweden. And then I found out that there was a brand new bridge that had just been opened over to Copenhagen in Denmark. And so off we'd go. And all of a sudden you'd find yourself in this exquisite, different, amazing place that you never could have imagined you'd be in a week or go or a month ago. And that was that was for me, that felt like I was extracting the maximum potential of my life. Whether you can maintain that pace for decades, I'm yet to discover. I now live a very quiet life, not exactly traveling to exotic destinations every other weekend, but I much prefer the life I'm living now. So up to those eight that I just referred to. One is absolutely about resources. So you can write that heading if you like. One is resources. Um, another is clarity. Um, another is identity. Uh, the fourth is how. The how. Um, the fifth is the quantum field. The sixth could be... Presence, let's call it um, simple things. 
Seven is gratitude. We spent quite a bit of time on that last week. And eight, eight is action. We did spend some time on that last week. Now, that's in no particular order, but I will tell you that they're the eight main themes. And I think that if you can master these areas in your vision board, visualization, manifestation, law of attraction journey, then you'll absolutely explore, experience and savor all that your heart truly desires in this lifetime. There's a little bit more. There are lots of like part A, part B or step one, step two, step three in each of those. But I'm going to try and give you an overview. We've only got an hour or so together, maybe maximum two, depending upon whether you can concentrate for that long or stay um, seated for that long before running away. Um, and of course, if we were all together, I would actually much prefer to do this particular mm, subject and this playful work over a day, you know, starting at 10 a.m., finishing at 4 p.m., having a leisurely lunch together, laughing and, and in person, that would be ideal. But we're here and we're all over the world. All righty, so I'm going to screen share a little. Um, uh, let's go to a guide that Mayumi has created. As you know, Mayumi is my beautiful Japanese right arm. I'm left-handed, by the way. Um, and uh, she and I have all sorts of ideas, but actually she's really the one that puts it into practice. So what I wanted to do was a really quick recap on last week. Now, what I said was your mood is absolutely critical when you're looking at your vision board, but your vision board should really be um, split. Let's just call it like 50-50, your vision board and your gratitude board. We're going to go into a couple of other concepts today, which is why most people who create vision boards don't have them work. They just don't work. And what the insidious nastiness about that is, is that they then start to stop, start to stop. They then get into this state where they don't believe that what's on their vision board will ever become reality. And so they lose hope. Um, Tony Robbins actually um says it exquisitely, so did lots of other people like Eleanor Roosevelt and I'm pretty sure Socrates before her, um, the great Greek and, and Egyptian and Roman Latin masters would have certainly said something like this. We as humans need hope. We must have hope. We actually have acceleration in disease rates when we've actually lost hope. Hope is really, really important. So if you can't believe that what's on your vision board is going to become a reality, you've lost hope, that's actually more dangerous to your goals, goal setting and goal achievement than anything else. Mood is really important. What I mean by that is you have a vibration and you're actually, it's called emotional contagion. When you're with somebody else and you're smiling and you're happy and you're vibrant and you're joyful and you're cheerful and you're exuberant and, you know, you're feeling like this incredible gratitude, great appreciation for your fabulous life. The interesting thing is, is that the other person is catching your emotion and that's been scientifically proven. But if you're looking at your vision board or your set of goals written out on a piece of paper and you're not feeling confident and calm and powerful and courageous and strong and resourceful, and we could go on and on and on, you're actually infusing those dreams, those wishes you're setting intentions that is actually the opposite. I don't know how else to describe it. So if you're feeling irky, your irky energy is actually infusing into your vision board experience. And so in Positive Prime, what we've actually tried to do is we've tried to make sure that we put you into a state of flow rapidly, like very, 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 very quickly without you even knowing that that's part of what's going on. You're you're being exposed to a series of photographs and there's a certain ratio, a certain number of those photographs have Duchenne smiles. So we talked about that last week. And so the eyes, the retina in your eyes in particular, are seeing those Duchenne smiles, sending messages to your mirror neurons and your brain is actually sending messages to your hormonal system. So your endocrine system is engaged and you're producing more serotonin, dopamine and oxytocin. And those neurotransmitters, this hormonal chemical cocktail that your body is producing is actually putting your brain into a state of flow. And in, in a state of flow, you're actually in a much healthier brain state, by the way, 
And it's interesting because a lot of people, they participate in a lot of healthy activities, whether it's diet or exercise, both of which are important, by the way, but they forget that their emotions create a chemical cocktail in their body that could completely negate any good that they're doing by what they put in their mouths, right? Or what they don't put in their mouths. Um, for example, you know, you've got diabetes and quite frankly, you reduce sugar, but if you actually have... Um, I'm going to call them negative emotions, anger, frustration, rage, disappointment, um, mm, all of these negative emotions that actually create a chemical top cocktail in your body that causes inflammation, right? And quite frankly, even if your, your nutrition and the nurturing you're doing by what you're putting in your mouth or actually what you're not putting in your mouth, that's all important, but you could actually go and completely ruin all of that effort just by your physical feelings and the way that you're thinking and the way that that's creating feelings. Now, how does that relate to achieving your heartfelt desires? Well, your mood, you're transferring, there's transference onto your visions. So you must be in a positively primed state before you start thinking about what's on your bucket list or even what are you going to do right now or today or this week in order to get yourselves a couple of steps forward towards experiencing, right? So mood, 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 mood. You need to be in a state of flow. I also talked about um, a big concept called jealousy. And that is, is that if you cannot be happy for others, having that which you really want, you, you physically are holding it away from you. So judgment and criticism, catch yourself. And every time you see somebody with something that you want or you desire or you wish that you had, you have to actually bless those people and you have to be really happy and delighted for them. And you can't even think, oh, I wonder, I'll give you an example. Let's just say you want a car. It's a really bad example, but it's a simple one for us to understand. I'm not really into supercars, by the way, just in case you wanted to know. I kind of don't even ever desire owning a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or whatever, right? It's just not me. Um, but I'm not going to judge somebody else who does because for them, their fast car might be what I would think of a beautiful craftsmanship created masterpiece that's got lots of diamonds in it. You know, quite frankly, I think that the, the artistry in creating a magnificent piece of jewellery really captivates me and you know no no judgment as to whether that's right or that wrong or whatever now if you really get to know me you'll actually find out that it's not things that I want it's experiences that I actually desire but let's go with the car example for example right so you see somebody driving a beautiful flash car and if you notice what goes through your brain, is it that you judge that person of them being materialistic and what's wrong with that? And whatever whatever you actually are judging, you know this, don't you? You're pointing one finger and three are pointing back to you. What that actually means is there are aspects of you and your shadow self that you are actually neglecting, right? And that you are making bad. And that is actually going to stop you from achieving what it is that you want in life. The universe will actually give to us um, uh, in a way that um, is in the best interest of our higher self. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's just say um, you have a really harsh judgment and some jealousy around somebody who is driving that fast car because they were gifted it from their parents and you've got some kind of issue with nepotism or with generational wealth or what will happen is you'll never find yourself in situations where there are opportunities by people who have been um, uh, given an inheritance to which you could actually be a party to being the beneficiary of. Um, let's just say, for example, um, you wanted to meet Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield's a beautiful man, very gracious, a gentleman, is super, super, super successful, and, um, you know, is the one of the two heads of Chicken Soup for the Soul, but that's like such a small part of his overall story. But let's just say that you get an opportunity to meet Jack Canfield, but it happens to be on a private yacht in Monte Carlo. And in Monte Carlo, that private yacht party is actually being hosted because it's a charity event with His Serene Highness, 
Albert, the Prince of Monaco, Monaco, whichever one you want to say. The the universe may have actually set up all of the circumstances, situation, people, the opportunity for you to actually experience that. But because you've got this irkiness in your own vibration around generational wealth and how it's not fair or whatever is what goes on inside your brain. The funny thing is, is that you will miss that opportunity because the fact is the prince was given the opportunity to be the prince because of who his family is and he happens to have access to resources and relationships that allow him to host a party for his conservation foundation, which actually is all about oceans and saving the oceans and so forth. But this particular event might be um, provided by a benefactor who happens to have a super yacht in Monte Carlo's harbour. Do you know where I'm going with this story? Your judgments, your criticisms, your beliefs about what's fair or not fair, and you'll know this by what you're jealous of, is actually a clue to what opportunities you've closed yourself off from in the quantum field. And most people do not understand this, right? They just don't understand it. So being happy, really genuinely and sincerely happy for others is absolutely critical if you want to achieve your goals. Now, we're going to talk about limiting beliefs and we're going to dive into a healing session very quickly. And then we're going to go through some really big concepts. And once you've grasped them, oh, golly gosh, you've got some of the special secret keys that you can turn so that, yes, you will be able to live your bucket list. So we're going to go into um, a limiting belief. And we started to explore one the other day, but I'm going to do some healing around a couple of limiting beliefs. I also talked to you about how some people create vision boards. They have these great pictures of things they want or experiences they want, but they've forgotten to put photographs of themselves in their vision board. So you will manifest magnificence and magically have things happen for other people. I dare say you actually want them to happen for you. So you need to have photographs of yourself inside your visioning experience. And of course, if you are really very deeply grateful and appreciative of what you already have and you have created a gratitude board, what you're actually telling the universe, what you're in line with, what you're attracting, this is all about alignment and congruence, is you have received things and you expect to be able to receive more. You have actually been the recipient of things circumstances, situations, opportunities, and you're happy to be the recipient of more. So combining gratitude with future, so past with future, is extremely important. And most people are so future focused, they've forgotten to tell in terms of communicating, putting instructions into the quantum field, they've forgotten to actually be of the vibration or the frequency that says, I have. And so when they see something that they don't yet have, they're actually in the vibrational frequency of not yet having that. And if you're in the frequency of not having something, you will stay in the vibration of not having something. And so that something can never actually be satisfied. It can't be fulfilled because you're in the vibrational frequency of not having that, whatever that is, right? It's complicated, which is why 99.9% .9 of people do not, actually get to live their bucket list they don't have a life that they just are super excited about and just oh, really 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 serene and peaceful about right but you're here and we're going to make sure that you either do 1000 steps if there's only 1000 steps in total <laughs> that make you the one that puts your head on the pillow or have your last hour or year and say you know what I am so incredibly peaceful. I really am. I'm fulfilled. I'm satisfied. All righty. So I want you to just ask the universe, what's on my bucket list? It really should say here what's on my bucket list or what's on my live list. So if you're in this positive prime community, forevermore, I want you to call it your live list, not your bucket list, right? Um What's on your live list? What's so in a meditation, you ask 
your angels, your guides, God, your guardians, your ascended masters, your higher self, your heart, ask, what's on my live list? And then notice when you are drawn into something as to whether it literally sparks you. It ignites your imagination. But even more important than that, it propels you to naturally, organically take action as if you're on autopilot, right? So you will know if it's in the best interests of your higher self, if you are drawn to it. But I'll tell you the sign you're looking for. The sign you're looking for, the sign you're looking for, if you're observing yourself, if you're aware enough, if you're conscious enough, the sign you are looking for is the results of actions you've taken. So if you haven't taken the actions, there can't be the consequences or the results of those actions. You have to observe that. If you have taken action organically, naturally, as if you're on autopilot, I promise you it's the universe answering your prayers. That's how you know that your passions are aligned with your outcomes and it's more likely you will experience what's on your live list. All righty. So I would like a really brave person to tell me what's one of their limiting beliefs and I'm going to dive into a healing session. Now, the truth is, is that um, we actually do have an opportunity. If you go and Google Kim Serafini and Serafini Mind Spy, you'll see that people come and have an experience with me for a half day or a full day at my beautiful place called The Nautilus here in Australia. And just like you can go to a chiropractor and you can pay $66 for 15 minutes and that chiropractor is experienced and expert and skillful and uses their heart and their infinite intelligence, their divine guidance to actually provide the healing, I do that for you with your emotional issues. And I normally charge about $300 for 30 minutes and it's because the shift that I make for you with you involved in the process, could literally unlock you so that there is a 10x or a 100x outcome for you in the future. But had you not had that shift, that shaking up, it wouldn't have been possible for you to have been in the right place at the right time with the right resources, with the right attitude and with the right people, right? So what I do is incredibly valuable and it's taken me decades to refine it. I'm going to do one here right now for something that I think is going to be of benefit to you all. So there'll be an advantage for all of you. Who wants to be really brave and I will. unmute themselves and say, hey, this is my limiting belief. I want this healing to be done on now. I'd be brave, Kim. Okay, awesome, Robin. I'm very proud of you. <clears throat> um, and I think about this often because, and um, and it's actually going to make me cry. Um, sometimes I think it's, 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 it's fear, fear. It could be either fear of success, fear of, um, security. Cause like being in the military, um, I'm, you know, I had security, then I retired and then I luckily, I, I got a job that pays quite well. And for the last, however many years, I'm like, okay, I want to build something up. I will work by myself or not by myself, but for myself. But yet at the same time, I'm scared half to death. So I don't know if it's the fear of the unknown, fear of success, or just flat out fear. Does that make sense? Um, um, I love it. You're just going to do all fear. Fear <laughs> of I'm not enough. I'm not deserving. I'm not worthy. Um, I'm not a child of God. Um, I, the world is not big enough. The well, world but is those not are, fine But those enough. are like the three things that, that yeah, course, I think that keep – that, that, back to because whether I'm talking to you or whether I'm talking or listening to Dana or, or whatever and you make the list I know that that still comes up okay all right everybody ready thank you Robin um I am I'm gonna dive into 
a healing that's going to shift everything for everyone, right? That's going to actually address those two. So it was um, extremely generous of you to offer that to the group. Everybody ready? Now, may I suggest that you try not to look at anybody else in the group? May I suggest that you close your eyes and you trust, right? So close your eyes and trust. Take a really nice big deep breath. And I would like for you to ask for divine healing energy to now be noticeable to you in your chest space. I want you to imagine, uh, and it's interesting actually, because I just watched um, that really famous movie about the um, atomic bomb uh, and the movie came out at the same time as Barbie and Oppenheimer was like, oh, who's seeing which movie anyway? But there was a scene in that movie where the test bomb went off and there was this extremely bright white light. Now, for those people who don't have great imaginations or even when I've said to Cameron, hey, will you imagine this? I want you to imagine a bright white light that is so shocking and so startling to you that it literally shakes up every cell in your body and you feel this energy, but I want you to see this bright white light. That is God energy or divine energy. That could be um, the energy that's associated with Buddhism or Hinduism or Sophism. It doesn't matter to me right now. It's your understanding that you are part of a cosmic greater whole. I want you to see this beautiful, big, bright light inside your entire body. You can start with imagining this incredibly bright white or golden light inside your head in, you know, swirling, circling around in your brain, in your throat, in your neck around your shoulders, in your chest, or in your upper torso, around your stomach, and around your hips, and then around the top parts of your legs, and swirling around your knees, and then the bottom halves of your legs, and then swirling around your ankles and through your feet. And try and see if you can see that energy now shoot out from you into the core of Mother Earth. Just be here for a moment and try to feel serene. Try to feel like you are in harmony with the universe. Allow yourself to just be really thankful that you are here right now. And I want you to potentially, if this works for you, put your hand over your chest, over your heart space, and I want you to thank yourself for getting you here. Now bear with me, I'm going to call in God and guides and guardians, ascender masters, angels and archangels and all of the entities and essences across all time, space, dimensions, realities and frequencies to us now to cleanse us and heal us, to purify us and put us in vibrational match, allow us to actually just resonate with pure potential. We say thank you, 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 thank you for all the opportunities we've been given, for all of the people who have shared their love and their care and their kindness with us across all lifetimes. We recognize that we have DNAs and from our ancestors, ancestors and their ancestors and their ancestors, it's highly likely we have thousands, if not millions of years of knowledge sacred knowledge within us what would it take for all of that to come into play for us now what would it take for us to just surrender into the unknown and allow ourselves to feel much more comfortable with the uncertainty the ambiguity allow us to be in a space where we know what it is that we want and we see what we need to see and hear what we need to hear and do what we need to do 
knowing that we don't have to have the actual answers or the solutions for the how. We can go with the flow. We can get an idea or an impulse to ring someone or go somewhere and we're wide awake, we're aware, we're consciously alert. And as we take each step, more and more is revealed and we realize that we are absolutely on the right path with the right people at the right time. The right resources are actually being given to us in the right timing. What would it take for us to know that we are truly divine, we are special and we are guided? What would it take for us to be centered and anchored, balanced in this knowing that we really truly are worthy and deserving? We're truly worthy and deserving. We don't need to do more. We just need to be more of our lightness. What would it take for us to be in service of others and contribute more freely to others? What would it take for everything that we want to need to come to us with greater ease and peace, love and joy? What would it take for us to actually allow ourselves to let go enough that everything starts to happen really quickly, but we can cope. We don't try to slow it down because we're not yet ready. We are ready. What would it take for us to know that we are ready? What would it take for us to actually take little tiny baby steps that actually do not make us feel uncomfortable, but rather more comfortable knowing that we are protected? What would it take for us to lean into the messages that we do not have to be out of our comfort zones? We can be well within our comfort zones. We are worthy and deserving of joy and peace and love and gentleness. What would it take for us to be truly delighted? Truly delighted. What would it take for the 1% improvement just to feel so natural, so glorious, and a feeling we enjoy and can savour? What would it take for those 1% improvements to happen even more frequently, more regularly, more consistently? It could be 1% a minute, 1% an hour, 1% a day. It could be 1% moment to moment. The speed we're actually relaxing into. It could be a rapid, but it feels like we're just gently flowing because we can cope. What would it take for all of us to know that what we want to need will be revealed to us as we take more and more intentional, purposeful steps? What would it take for us to be very clear, noticing what actually lights us up, what draws us in? What would it take for us to honour ourselves and what our hearts are telling us? What our hearts are helping us to feel and know. And anything or anyone in the way of that, please delete it, uncreate it, and destroy it across all the time, space, dimensions, realities, and frequencies. And anything or anyone that can facilitate that with ease and grace and speed and joy, please create it, add it, destroy it across all the time, space, dimensions, realities, and frequencies. Okay, so gently come back and allow yourself to open your eyes and now feel alert and brighter and freer and like you're floating and all is well. Any comments? Definitely lightheaded. <laughs> yeah. It was really powerful. Do you know, I think that that was actually because of the collective energy. I think that each and every single one of you here is super powerful, right? So I actually came back feeling really lightheaded as well, which to me means 
there is this special magic in this group. So I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who were here and participated with your whole hearts. All righty. All righty, so there's something really amazing about Positive Prime that does that healing for you, and I'm going to explain how actually in this um, session. So I want you in future to notice that anything you're anxious about or fearful for are actually just natural responses to perceived threats. Our brain does actually have a desire to keep us safe. I'm sure you've all heard that there is a reptilian part of our brain that is so ancient that is trying to keep us safe. That That's what has us... Um, noticing what we're fearful of and reacting and we're either freezing or we're fleeing or we're fighting and those of you who've been in our community for a long time will actually know that it's only half of the truth yes it is true however there is something that's i think more significant that's equally as true and that is our research, our research that we did that proved the efficacy that a positive prime actually does positively prime you, the formula does work exquisitely and rapidly. We did that with some people who I include Dr. Avinash Singh at the Brain Computer Interface Lab in the School of Engineering at the University of Technology, Sydney, which is a little bit like MIT in the US. Anyway, what we actually proved through eye tracking, skin conductance, heart rate variability, ECG, all these fancy devices, people watching our subjects, participants in the, in the study, and we know for a fact that you are more inclined to notice smiles, people, you're more inclined for what's called pro-social behavior and connection. So on um, many, 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 many pathways of my journey, I've been led to believe that our limiting beliefs are what actually are keeping us back. I don't agree. I actually don't agree anymore. I think our empowering beliefs are propelling us. And I actually think you can cancel out your limiting beliefs. I'm not sure you need to understand them, excavate for them and actually work through them. I think you need to know the opposite of them, your empowering beliefs, right? I think a lot of people actually want to um, work on their limiting beliefs in some kind of therapy session, counseling session, healing session, and yes, that's 50% true. However, you can't do it exclusively if you don't work on the opposite. So what actually happened was that we proved that human beings in this reptilian part of their brain as they're reacting instinctively aren't more likely. They are not more likely to actually respond as if they're angry, the fight response, as if they're fleeing, the fear response, or as if they're frozen, right? It's not the truth. And we've actually been led to believe that as a way to control us. And I think that that's insidious. We are more inclined to bond with each other to help each other. We are literally biologically wired to cheer for each other, to be kind to each other, to cuddle each other, to celebrate with each other. We are more inclined for pro-social behavior because in the ancient part of our brain, this natural automatic autopilot response that everybody goes, oh, I'm so sorry, but I reacted because the reptilian brain I was in 
you know, fight, flight or freeze. You've heard this. It's BS. On the savannah, when the threat was coming towards you, but you needed to see it well in advance to know how you're going to react, right? You needed to categorize it. You needed to know which box it fitted into so how you would actually either run away from the threat, fight the threat, right? Guess what you were more inclined to do? You were more inclined to hug the threat. You were more inclined to look to each other and go, hey, anyone want to come and help me assess this? Is it a threat? Maybe it's not, right? That's how we survived. The survival instinct is not just fight, flight, freeze. What are the F words do you think that we should add to that? Any guesses? Anyone want to give us some, you know what, we're going to coin some stuff here. What are some other Fs that we could add? It's not fight, fright, flee, freeze. Flow, hey, forgive, hey. Fellowship, friend, free flow, free. To, I love you guys. Yeah, you know what? I do not want you to buy the story. You've been told, and everyone you know who does personal development and self improvement, like the work, it's time for us to stand up and make sure that everybody knows we are more inclined to link arms and actually embrace that thing out there that's way out on the horizon across the desert as if it's advancing towards us. We did not need to be afraid of it in the first instance. We needed to know if it was going to be helpful to us, if it was going to be beneficial to us, right? However, and I'm going to tell you something really strange about us as humans, we get addicted. Who has watched What the Bleak Do We Know? If you haven't watched What the Bleak Do We Know, I definitely want you to write that down. It's called What the Bleak Do We Know. If you haven't watched it recently, maybe you want to rewatch it. Maybe you'll learn something new because guess what? <laughs> this happened to me the other day, right? So 25 years ago, I went to a Date with Destiny program with Anthony Robbins, right? Anyway, I literally just watched this incredible um, interview with Tony and Tom Bellio about Date with Destiny and some new, brand new research that's just been done at Stanford University and um, the participants, hundreds of them who went to Date with Destiny. And anyway, it's all about anxiety and depression. I've actually posted it on the Positive Change Makers Facebook group. So definitely go to the Positive Change Makers Facebook group. Anyway, do you know... Most of Tony's messages are very similar to that which I heard 25 years ago, but I'm entirely upgraded. I'm more mature and I heard the messages entirely in unique ways. Again, I loved it, right? So if you haven't seen What the Bleak Do We Know, watch it. If you've seen it but you need to refresh yourself, I encourage you to go watch it again. So anyway, we became addicted. So what happened was, was that we actually wired our brains to actually lean into fight, flight, freeze instead of friend, flow and free, right? We became habitually addicted to the chemical cocktail. Fear is a chemical cocktail in our body. It's exactly like any other. Now, I know you all understand this theoretically or in principle, if you drink a lot of red wine or vodka, you will become addicted to that, right? And your body will actually seek out and search for and create opportunities for you to satiate the addiction, which is highly likely first and foremost a sugar addiction. But anyway, you're going you're gonna to actually seek out and create manifest opportunities so that you can have either the red wine or the vodka, right? Hmm. So... I promise you, we are all addicted to the fear molecules in the chemical cocktail, right? We are. We actually have to become addicted to the opposite. And that's the power of positive prime, right? We have to become addicted to the opposite. That's the power of positive prime. So... What Positive Prime does, and it's really interesting, is that it, it allows you to overcome the anxiety and the fear and the limiting beliefs because 
There are phrases that you're seeing, and I mentioned this last week, there are phrases that you're seeing like, I am in outstanding physical condition. Now, if that's not the truth, for example, and by the way, that needs to be the case if you want to live your bucket list. So I'm going to tell you how this links up because you're going to think, what on earth? Last year, part of my bucket list, I was bringing to reality and what it was to actually be in Egypt and to be at the pyramids. Anyway, we got on a cruise in um, Greece, starting in Athens, and we actually went to a particular port and there was an Acropolis. And I was probably half asleep during most of my ancient history classes at school. Anyway, I decided that I was going to go to this Acropolis. Now, that's a grand um, ancient building on top of usually a hill or an outcrop. Anyway, I said on top of which meant that the incline was much greater than the average um, walking machine is going to have you at training, right? So if I hadn't have been really in outstanding physical condition, I could not have enjoyed the summit to the Acropolis. And I actually had this incredible aha, we need to be in the best physical condition, our health-wise, vitality-wise, energy-wise, if we're going to go and live our bucket list, because everything that's on your bucket list, I dare say, requires a fair bit of energy, right? So for those of you who are actually serious about what it is that you want to experience in this lifetime, I would say that getting much fitter should be a part of what's on your live list. So on your live list, <laughs> I would write at the top, improve my fitness. Even if it's only 1%, it doesn't even need to feel like an effort. It honestly doesn't. I swear to you, I promise you, all of this blah we see from all of these coaches, oh, you need to be outside your comfort zone, rah, rah, ego, testosterone. What? Ah? That's how angry all that shit makes me. It's not the truth. Being gentle, being in harmony, feeling pure joy. Love and divinity means that you do not have to be outside your comfort zone to achieve your goals. That is just the biggest load of naughtiness we've ever been fed right i hope you get to start to believe me on this the tiniest most incremental not noticing improvements will mean that you are in flow being in a state of flow doesn't hurt at all living your bucket list and achieving what's on that list does not mean that you will hurt in any way, shape or form. It's one of the biggest myths I just have to bust and burst out of and help you to, right? So anyway, with Positive Prime, it's effortless and people think that it's not working, but it's working because it's effortless. You just sit there and enjoy and interestingly enough, this is what's happening. Most of us have been taught, particularly those of us who followed people like Anthony Robbins in neuroassociative conditioning or people like Dr. Paul Shealy, who I absolutely love and adore and respect and admire with his paraliminals um, and the hypnosis um, part of him. Anyway, we've been led to believe that all of us get what we want when we don't have limiting beliefs. What we don't hear and we should hear, I'd like us all to hear in preference, is we will all get what it is that we want when we have empowering beliefs. And most people have actually been led to believe that this belief thing is about your conscious or subconscious mind, but most importantly, your subconscious mind. Everybody, not if you've heard that. You've heard it's about your subconscious mind, right? Okay. That also is not entirely the truth in any way, shape, or form, and we need to dispel that. I know that you have empowering beliefs overpowering you and actually having you on autopilot in an accelerated fashion, achieving what it is that you want to need. When I can look at you, you as if you are the iceberg, that's you, if you're pink, pink positive. That's what I want you to think, pink positive. Blue is blue. You know, when you're feeling blue, you're sad, right? Now, if you are pink positive, I've got to tell you that my greatest aha and download, and I swear to you it was a divine download, and I've been teaching this now for, God, more than 15 years, but it's about pink food dye in the ocean. 
And it's about dropping something in to this ocean of pink positive and then the ocean colors infuses the iceberg. If I dip you in pink positive, you will be colored pink. But into the ocean of other than consciousness, in the divine ocean, there is only love and pink. That's all there is. But somehow I want you to imagine that our little icebergs, that's you and me, we grew arms and legs and we jumped out of the water and we started to dance across the land. And I don't know, we went and jumped into a blue ocean and then we became sad, angry and anxious and fearful. It doesn't serve us. It's hilarious. No, except that it's like, oh my golly gosh, it's what's been preventing all of us. So we're about to dive into what, what do we do so that we all are pink icebergs with pink conscious and subconscious minds. And we continue to pour more pink food dye into our own ocean of consciousness in which we bob around in. So anybody who's been a part of Positive Prime for a long time knows that this is what it's all about. And guess what? I was the very first person in the world to invent a way to access the other than consciousness as a physical human being inside three minutes. And this is why Dr. Paul Shearley had me come and stay in his home nearly 13, 14 years ago, right? So the speed of a positive prime session, the speed is actually, if you just let go, surrender and allow, and you don't try to read the words, I'm fabulously fit, guess what? It literally is what bypasses the conscious critical judgment factors of your prefrontal cortex that are trying to keep you outside of changing your conscious and your subconscious. I'm going to say that to you again. When a positive prime session is flowing really super fast, I'm going to give you an example. This is called a visual. Oh, no, I'm going to go back here. This is called, oh, no, I'm, oh, oh. This is called my private, private personal vision video. It's on YouTube. It's positive prime sessions mixed and merged with a, oh, thousands of my own personal photographs everything that I'm grateful for, all of the experiences that I've had, my, you know, family, my friends, my pets, my clients, my highlights of my life, the experiences that I, you know, I'm so grateful for, plus all of the images that are in my vision, in my future, in my desires, my wishes, my goals, my dreams, etc. right? Anyway, as you can see here, there's lots and lots and lots of videos. In fact, there's 36 videos and they're all super short. You can actually have one of these things called a personal super mix as a vision video, but with the positive prime formula, right? So I'm just, I'm gonna just play this here for you now, right? So I have a plugin on Google Chrome that allows me to speed this up or slow this down. So I'm just gonna go back to, um, and do you mind, I'm literally just going to pause the music so that I don't have to yell over it, is that okay? So this, this is a positive prime session. Actually, no, it's more than 10 positive prime sessions mixed, but I'm going to go even slower. And over here in um, YouTube, I can make it go at 0.25. Right, so I'm going to talk you through this just a little bit and then explain to you that if I it feels satisfying to work on my goals, I could go, no, it doesn't. It feels bloody difficult to work on my goals, right? Well, if I see that and I don't try to fight it because it's flowing past me fast enough, my brain is going to go in search of the evidence to actually make what I'm seeing right. I understand what is important to others. So my brain goes in search of the evidence to now support that belief. All of the positive statements inside Positive Prime are self-fulfilling prophecies. They're empowering statements, right? They enrich you. They're not limiting beliefs. And what happens is your brain goes in search of evidence to prove that that's actually correct or accurate or right for you. Your brain can't help but do this. It's a neuroscience fact, right? Money comes to me every day in increasing amounts from multiple service, the sources. 
Now, if that's not actually what you think is true, I promise you an opportunity is going to arise and you're going to say yes, and it could be for a side hustle or a part-time job or an investment opportunity. Something will occur to you to make that actually true or correct or accurate or right for you. Now, what's fascinating is that there is that's pro-social behavior, that's connection. There is a certain number of photographs that actually feed your brain to look for pro-social behavior and connection in your life because that will enrich you and empower you. That will actually put you in the vibration and frequency that will allow you to actually more effortlessly, easily and joyfully and gracefully achieve your goals. Right? We want you to achieve your goals, but with grace, with speed and with joy in a lighthearted and cheerful way. Right? There is actually a certain number of images like this as well. See the four? What actually happens like a paraliminal is your brain gives up trying to make sense of each one individually and actually you just accept all four. So wherever in a positive prime there are four on one slide, that's like a super boost from a neuroscience perspective. Every single time you see the Duchenne smiles, you're actually having that chemical cocktail increased inside of you. Now, if you also say a prayer, just I want you to imagine you're in business and you have customers or clients. Let's just say you're actually in a network marketing business or a direct sales business or an affiliate business. If whilst you're setting yourself up for a positive prime session, you get yourself into a beautiful state where you're feeling love and you're feeling expansive and you're feeling like you're very grateful, right? And you're seeing photographs of yourself if you actually also say a prayer or an incantation, as Tony Robbins might call it, and you say maybe it's to your God you're speaking to or maybe it's your higher self or it's your heart, what would it take for all of this to be true for me with greater ease, joy, peace, love? What would it take for this to all be true for me? What would it take for me to connect with really awesome people like this and they could be my clients? What would it take for all of this to be true for me? What would it take for all of this to feel like this was making my life worth living. You can say whatever it is that you like, but you should plant an intention, a seed that you actually live into actually whilst you're watching a positive prime. Now, the interesting thing is, is that if you watch this positive prime on speed two or higher, and I'll show you what it's like in, in the actual positive prime software, you are actually bypassing, you're bypassing like seriously, it's going so fast. What's actually happening is you're bypassing the conscious critical judgment factors of your prefrontal cortex, which usually rejects everything that is unfamiliar or uncertain to you. And so you allow for, you allow for the opportunities to actually flow. Alrighty, so <laughs> speed is your friend in positive prime. And so let's just go to a positive prime session and we're going to do, I want someone to give me an example of what's on their bucket list. Cause I asked you to actually try to prioritize if there were five places you wanted to go to, what would the five be and in what order? And then I'm going to tell you how this relates to the eight that I said at the beginning, when I, when I actually basically said, Everything has these eight main themes. It's either about your resources, it's about your identity, it's about the clarity that you have around what you want and why. It's around how grateful you are, or appreciative you are. It's around um, the way that you're interacting with the quantum field. It's around the simple things, right? So I asked you for an example. Um, anyone want to give me an example? And then I'm going to show you what I would do if that was on the top of mind. An example of a place you really want to go to? Australia. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> do you know where in Australia? Um, no, no, not really. I have a, a really good friend of mine that I actually met in, in 1989, and she's from Australia. And she and I have been talking off and on for the years. We need to get together. We need, when are you coming to Australia, you know, but okay. I don't know right. exactly where. Let's use that as an example. Let's use that as an example, shall I? Okay. Watch me as I do this. And these are the clues or the steps. The quantum field, which you might otherwise know as the divine, wants you to be specific about the what and the why. 
detailed about the what and the why, not about the how. You need to be specific about the what and the why. So if I was you, I would spend at least half an hour, once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever's going to serve you. Um, uh, how long, how long do I need to need to see the whole of Aus whole of Australia on a vacation? How many days are enough? Six to ten to get a taste. Okay, I am an Aussie and I would tell you that that is not anywhere. That would be like an American look. No, that would be like an Australian looking at America going, oh, I'm going to see the whole of America. I'm going to do um, LA. I'm going to do Dallas. I'm going to do San Antonio. I'm going to do San Francisco. I'm going to do Boise, Idaho. I'm going to do Miami, Florida. I'm going to do Tampa, Florida. I'm going to do... Central Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. I'm going to do Philadelphia whilst I'm in Pennsylvania and I'm going to do New York, but actually I really want to go to Martha's Vineyard as well. 10 days. Possible? Possible? Not possible. I know. I've actually been to all those places. No, do you know what I mean? So Australia, 10 days, no way. So More like you need to be days. specific. You need to actually speak to some Australians. You need to do some research. So all of that which is on your bucket list requires you to refine your desire. I said refine. Clarity is the big one. So what I want you to do is I want you to do this instead. This is an example. Instead of asking Google a question like that, we've all got Google, right? It's brilliant. I want you to ask, um, let me just move my controls out of the way here that we're making. Best of Australia images. Okay. I want you to be honest with yourself. I want you to look at an image and I want you to just be honest with yourself. Does it ignite you? Does it make your heart beat a little bit faster? Does it make you feel a little bit more excited? Does it make you want to anticipate the taste, the sound, the flavor, right? You need to refine. Is seeing the animals important to you? Is it actually going and um, enjoying, you know, the whitest beach in the world? Do you want to go to the opera when you're at the opera house? You have to refine what's on your list. Then you have to have images that really help you. Now, you might actually spend some time Googling what is the most efficient way to see the East Coast of Australia. Uh, fly from Melbourne to Sydney and then from Sydney to the Gold Coast, Byron Bay. So you want to travel. So you've got to actually just do a fair bit of Googling, right? Now, let's just say you go here to... Um, Best um, quality, luxury, small group tour of Australia. Abercrombie and Kent. Let's see if they've got Australia. We saw Abercrombie and Kent last week for um, Australia. Shall we just see if they've got Australia? Start exploring Australia. All right. Look at this, wildlife and nature around the world by private jet or Blue Mountains to Hunter Valley. Flinders Ranges are oh, Australia's red centre. Rainforest to reef. Okay, I need some help. Um, Linda, uh, do you want to put into the chat? Robin, do you want to put into the chat? Anybody else want to put into the chat? I'm, I've got to select one of these. Let me go to the chat. Or come out and tell me. Rainforest to reef. Rainforest to reef. Okay, thank you, Catherine. All right, so let's click here. <coughs> now, uh, Cairns, Daintree, Lizard Island. Guys, I can tell you, great itinerary. I should know. I live in this state called Queensland, right? So just say I'm looking here and I go to gallery and, wow, that looks pretty nice. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to save image as. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to save image as. And I'm going to say, oh, so this is Rainforest to Reef 2023 Hero number five. 
it's going into my iCloud. I'm just going to show you what then happens. If I don't want my other than consciousness to reject this image, and because I have been in here before, let's just see if this works. Can you can you all see um, what I'm doing or not because they're pop-ups? Maybe not because they're pop-ups. Let me just um, refresh here. Sorry, I was playing with personalising before we started. Um, and we're on Zoom, so just bear with me. I'm going to see if it populates. Uh upload um where is where is gwendolyn nsw where's that uh write it in the chat for me okay hold on okay that's this is where she lives what she told me where she lives okay so just bear with me for a second. Can you see that I literally am personalizing a session called Mastering Magic and that's the photo? Can you actually see that that was the photo? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yes. Now, if I include this in my positive prime along with a photograph of me at my 50th birthday, along with a photograph of my own pool, um, and this is actually a photograph of my family, and you can see I've uploaded lots of other photographs. Um, this is me and Cameron. Um, and I don't know. Um, photographs of me. I should have another. I don't like that one. Let's not do that one. Photographs of me. That was a happy moment. Oh, these are some shoes I wore to a party. And I just love being able to do that. Um, this is me swimming in one of the most magnificent places on planet Earth. It's called Bodrum in Turkey. This is me and my mum, Cameron. Uh, now if I play the session, what's going to happen is those images I've just selected are now saved into the session and they will appear. If I watch the session quickly, it will actually have those seeds planted in my other than consciousness and I will be on autopilot programmed to go and achieve anything and everything that allows me to experience walking on a beach like that. So there's a couple of little clues. And I'm, I'm just, it, the faster it goes, the more it works for your other than consciousness, right? The faster you go, the more it works for your other than consciousness. You need to manifest other than consciousness. So what's happening, if we go back to the analogy, is all of these images are being like drops of pink food dye that are going into the ocean. And I'm the pink iceberg and I'm bobbing around and I'm now going to manifest all that's in here or more of what's in here. If I've got images of experiences I've had that I've loved, I'm going to manifest more of those types of experiences, you know, almost with the flavor of that which I love or um, similarities to that which I love, right? That's effectively how it works. Right. So I'm just going to pause there and say, uh, where are we down? Gwendolyn, um, here's what I would do. Uh, sorry, let me just go back to screen sharing. And um, and then I go to maps. And I go, here it is, Dal. <laughs> Robin, here's your answer. Now, do I know where this is? No, but am I going to figure out where this is? Um uh where else do i know oh newcastle so it's north of sydney so you'd need to fly into sydney and then here it is here's this little red thing and you'd need probably two hours driving to get there but you'll be able to figure that out on um directions if you do drive from sydney to here um it's in a region called the central coast it's absolutely beautiful this is a magnificent part of australia magnificent part of Australia. Can you see this little green spot? 
oh, that's near me. Anyway, so I'm here, north of Brisbane, right? The distances from here to here and from here to here, and more importantly, from here to the Great Barrier, they are vast. And Australia is the kind of place that, quite frankly, um, I think if you tried to do it in two weeks, it would be absolutely impossible. And I would definitely um, do one or two days, three, four, five days, Tasmania, um, a couple of days, five days, Melbourne, a couple of days and around five days, a couple of days here, five days, a couple of days here, five days. You have to fly between these places, right? These are not drivable if you're tired, suffering from jet lag and you want that to sounds, see something. That sounds like a retirement, a retirement vacation. <laughs> uh, and by the way, the distance between, for those of you who don't know, but the distance between here and here is a very long way. Um, most people stop in Hawaii for a couple <laughs> of times before they can try this. Unless, of course, you're flying business class. But here's the interesting thing about, um, about bucket lists. You have to know what's important to you. And some people don't even know where to start, which is why I actually want to talk about this. This is your seven big areas of life. You want to write some of the things you want to experience with respect to your health. Do you actually want to be able to touch your toes? I'm not being um, silly here. It should be on your live list. If you cannot touch your toes now and you'd like to be able to touch your toes, in other words, you'd like to be able to increase your flexibility, put it in your live list. How about relationships? If you've never been married and you want to be married, make sure that it's in your live list. Do you want to have a couple of really decent friends from your childhood or not? What's important to you? No judgment, no criticism. Don't worry about what other people are going to say about what it is that you want and need and desire. This is about you, you. This is your life, right? What is it that you want to experience? Do you want to contribute? How do you want to contribute? What do you want to contribute to? your finances, so health, relationships, vocation and finances, personal development. Do you want to go to a Tony Robbins event? If you do, you've got to start Googling where is the next live Tony Robbins event. Now you can do Tony Robbins events virtually. I would never do it virtually. I'd only ever do it in person, but I've done all of these events in person. I've done Deepak Chopra's events in person. I've done Dr. Joe Dispenza's events in person. That's why I am the person I am. No, do you know what I mean? Like just decide what's really important to you. How do you want to live your life socially? Right now, I'm going to tell you, there are some things that are going to be on the list, right? And you can actually, there's a be in our workbook, there's a beautiful um, little, it's like flowers. I kind of say to um, Mayumi, I can see, you will not feel fulfilled if you don't actually address at least one in each of these areas simultaneously. I don't say that for Australians. Australians say simultaneously. Americans say simultaneously. Anyway, whatever you get it. I promise you the research shows you actually need to do one tiny little thing in each and every one of these areas simultaneously for you to feel like life is rich and worth living and that you're living it right that you won't achieve a goal and then have this like sense at the end like oh god what was that all about all right so the interesting thing is is that you have to make a decision you have to make a decision that you will achieve something and then let it go let it go by actually telling the universe that you're really very content with that or this or something even better that is in the best interest of my higher self. And I'll give you an example. I was looking before about when to go and see the cherry blossoms in Japan. I actually love Silver Sea Cruises. They're my favorite type of cruise. Um, I love everything about Silver Sea. Now, I don't care whether people think it's too extravagant or not. I don't actually care what other people think. I care what I think and whether I believe I can do this. Now, you have to make a decision, though. Will you make sure that you've seen the cherry blossoms in Japan at the time that they're actually blossoming, right? So you better find out when they're blossoming. When are the cherry blossoms in Japan? March to April, right? 
Now, the decision is, do you want to experience that? Now, imagine for a moment you're standing underneath the cherry blossoms in Japan. And then decide, decide whether you're willing to experience that in ever in whatever the way, shape or form is that that actually occurs for you. So if I'm fixated on the only way I'll get to see the cherry blossoms is on a silver sea cruise, quite frankly, it may not be a part of divine timing. And I think that 99.9% .9 of people do not achieve what is in the, on their bucket lists. They don't experience the things that are important to them because they have rules. Remember last week, we talked about rules. Tony Robbins says that at the end of the day, everything is about rules. Like um, you are healthy if, you are healthy if, if when, he loves me if, he loves me when. So if I have this rule that Cameron, I would feel loved if Cameron, um, now what would be impossible for me to expect from Cameron? Um, if Cameron, or I'll tell you something like silly. He would love me if um, he said I could give up work forever because he's going to pay for everything. That's so not going to happen, by the way, ever. Um, I'll tell you why not. Funnily enough, this is just private personal information because he knows that this is my dharma, this work here with me, you and now. And he knows that I have to do this. God makes me do this. I love doing it. It's what I was born for. It's who I am. I could never not work, right? Um, I should have chosen a different example, but um, we don't allow ourselves to achieve what's on our bucket list because we have rules that prevent it. Um, that rule might be, and I actually just, by the way, I'm going to use an example, so I hope you don't mind. That sounds like a retirement trip. That's a rule that will prevent you from achieving that on your bucket list. You have to catch yourself with your rules. We all have them, by the way. All of us have them. Um, I might have a rule around the Northern Lights. I actually caught myself earlier today. The Northern Lights, I really want to see the Northern Lights. But I was actually looking at a cruise and what I've actually discovered is the best place to see them is effectively in the Arctic region, north of Norway, Greenland. Um, but the best time for the Northern Lights is the middle of winter. And there are no cruises in that region in the middle of winter because there are these big things called icebergs, presumably. Um, so the funny thing is, is I went, oh, well, if I really want to see the Northern Lights, that means I have to go there in the middle of winter, but I also can't go there via cruising. Um, let's just say, and I used to talk about this, I used to have this really weird rule. I don't know where I got it from, that um, if you wanted to be really successful, you had to actually look a physical way. You had to be really slim and fit. And then I caught myself, this is about 20 years ago, looking at Oprah. And I thought, could you imagine if Oprah had that rule that she couldn't be really successful if she wasn't slim and fit? See, I lived in the corporate world and in the corporate world, there was this incredibly weird like peer group pressure around executives. And if you were overweight, you didn't actually get promoted. It was almost like the bosses were looking for people who had their lives completely and utterly organized and in order. And the demonstration of that was that you were slim and fit. Usually you did some kinds of marathons or triathlons in your spare time. And corporate executives used to talk about what they did in their spare time as a way to elevate themselves in terms of the positioning and the perception around promotion time. And I actually, I bought into that. And I used to think, oh, wow, I'm not fit enough and I'm not slim enough because I'd put on a little bit of weight. Now, I'm going to tell you 20 years ago, I was really very slim compared to 99.9% .9 of the universe, but I did not feel that. That's a whole nother issue. And I didn't have a, um, an eating disorder, but I definitely had, 
a dysmorphia of some sort. I actually thought that in order to progress in life, I needed to be attractive enough and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, I caught the belief. I then looked for evidence that was the opposite. And it's one of the keys that I tell everybody about. You have to find the opposite. I want you to find somebody who has spent a month in Australia and didn't wait until retirement, right? I know quite a lot of people who are building teams in the network marketing industry and what they'll do is they'll come to Australia and they'll host a you know, meeting for team members in Sydney and then one in Melbourne and then one in Perth and then one in Brisbane and ah, voila, they spend a couple of days before and after with some of their team members and they've spent a month in Australia and it wasn't necessarily on vacation but it looked like vacation felt like vacation sounded like vacation was a vacation it just so happened to have a couple of events right I mean I've seen a lot of America um and interestingly enough I used to have this rule that um vacation meant I wasn't working so I'll give you an example I, I did a merger and acquisition and I was based in central Pennsylvania and I had to go to some meetings in Washington anyway I never saw the White House. I never did anything in Washington. I would like go to these meetings in these hotels. I get driven by, you know, a chauffeur from the airport and back again, right? And I never saw anything. And so I'd go, oh, I've never been to Washington. My rule was, unless I spent some time there sightseeing as a tourist, like it didn't count, right? So you've got to be careful about the rules that you make and the decisions you make for how you're going to achieve your bucket list. And like I said to you last week, and this is the reference to healthy, if you have a rule, I am healthy if I drink at least eight glasses of water a day, on average, four days a week or five days a week, you're likely to feel healthier because you actually satisfied your own rule. Now, I'm going to tell you what that does for your vibrational frequency in case you need me to repeat it or reinforce it. It means that you are in congruence with being healthy. And I'm going to tell you something really interesting about your identity, right? I would often say there are three main reasons why you will not achieve what's on your bucket list, why your vision board won't work. And one of them is about your identity. And if you do not feel worthy and deserving, that's about your identity. And if you don't see yourself as a leader, you are highly likely not going to do what leaders do. You're not going to be a leader, let's just say, in a network marketing business because I know a lot of our customers are in sales and network marketing. You won't end up having people follow you because you don't hold yourself as a leader. Your identity has to be associated with the outcomes that you want, right? If you don't see yourself as an adventurer or an explorer or as a curious person, you are highly likely not going to travel the road less traveled and see that which absolutely surprises and astonishes you and fascinates you and makes the experience of doing what's on your bucket list, all the more amazing. Your identity is key to living and loving what would have been on your bucket list. So we're going to dive a little bit more into that. Um, and I know that we're nearly up for an hour and a half and you've been amazing. So I just want to say to you all, bear with me, we'll go here. Um, most people don't even know where to start and they actually don't even know how to make themselves feel awesome about what they've already achieved in their lives. And that's actually one of the reasons why we created these amazing little eBooks. There's 100 ideas that are inspirational for you to really think about what could be on your live list. And there's another um, amazing little eBook that's 500, right? I would suggest for one or $5, if you um, want to just, I don't know, um, challenge yourself the, the the funny thing is is that um, I actually use it so I'm just going to go here I used it uh, the other day 
And I was like, gosh, it made me feel fantastic about what I've already experienced in life. And I felt incredibly blessed and lucky and fortunate. And what does feeling blessed and lucky and fortunate mean that's going to happen in my life? I'm going to have more and more and more, which just serendipitously and synchronistically and coincidentally occurs in my life that is in alignment with me feeling blessed and lucky and fortunate, right? So I went down this list. Just have a little look, right? Have a little look at some of the things. I have actually achieved a stretch goal. I haven't run a marathon. I actually wondered what is on my live list. Is running a fun run or a half marathon or a marathon important to me? If the answer is yes or no, it doesn't matter. It's It actually is only pertinent to you. You don't need to declare this to anyone else except I am going to tell you that one of the most fascinating parts about all of this is community and cheerleading. Have you ever been with people who will actually try to talk you out of what's on your bucket list? Will tell you, you know, I, I don't, right, you need to actually have some boundary setting conversations with people and say, look, it may not be on your bucket list, but it is on mine. And I would like for you to encourage me to achieve what's on my bucket list, just the same way you would want me to encourage you. And every single time I do something that's in the right direction, I'd really love it if we could share it and celebrate it, right? Communities like this one at Positive Prime, I think are all about cheering others on. I have baked a cake for someone special. Anyway, you know what? I went down here and I was like, I have done a 1,000 piece jigsaw. You wouldn't believe it. It was actually over um, the beginning of January this year. I hadn't done it until now, you know, already in my 50s. Um, as I scroll down, I'm just going to go all the way down. Um, it was bizarre what happened inside my brain. Captivated by alpine scenery, merged with gastronomical delights. I have been to Switzerland and Austria. Um, I'd love to go again with Cameron. Um, I definitely, definitely want to see the Northern Lights. So that's actually probably my top five. So you can actually go, I definitely, definitely see, I'm just drawn to it. So I write it down. Go to a pet cafe in Tokyo. Cameron loves cats. And I'm thinking, well, if we went to Japan, would I make sure that we go to a pet cafe whilst we're in Tokyo? Well, I could probably organize that. I could facilitate that. Um, there's just, I have actually seen volcanic activity um, in Hawaii. I have not camped in the Grand Canyon. I have visited a few of the really extraordinary landmarks in the world. I would love to do part of the migration in the Serengeti. Allow yourself to dream and then let go and then say to the universe, if this is in my best interests, what would it take for this or something even better? How do we make sure that it happens with ease and grace and speed and joy? Look, the truth is, is that you're probably going to need um, a side hustle, some extra investments. You're probably going to need some other resources to achieve that's what we, that which is on your bucket list. Those people who've known me really, really well know that not only do I have Positive Prime as a primary business, I also still have my side business, which is absolutely Seraphini Mind Spark coaching and health retreats and so forth and healing. And um, I also have had and probably will always have at least one or two in the multiple sources of income category. And so long as I feel like they're, um, reinforcing or there's an interplay between these network marketing or direct sales opportunities and either Serafini Mindspire or Positive Prime, then I feel like I'm not split in too many different directions. But I think you have to have an identity also that is very much about um, I earn extra money, I save money, and I invest money that then earns money so that I have more than enough to actually achieve what's on my bucket list. Now, if one of your limiting beliefs is I don't have enough money, then I would suggest we've got some really deep work to do. Really, really, really deep work to do. Um, I would invite you to absolutely um, take advantage of this. Uh, we have a special, instead of $300 um, for 30 minutes, you can have five coaching sessions for only $300. And I would suggest that you do two in week one, two in week two, and one in week three or thereabouts. 
and we actually do some really specific healing and we figure out what is actually blocking you and we implant some empowering beliefs that completely overwrite that which and one of them might be I don't know if I'll ever have the money to go do what it is that I want to do well that is actually a message that you are imprinting into the quantum field that is returning to you everything that holds it away from you so I would suggest that we can actually deal with that why do I know that it's necessary because the truth is I used to be the kind of person well who would do this I would write out what my goals were I'd write out what my action steps were and I'd actually you know because of all the goal setting things say you know there was a timeline and then I realized that this this actually flies in the face of something that is even more remarkable and that's the universe's power with my divine connection to allow something to happen miraculously in ways or shapes or forms that I could never have actually organized myself. So the crazy thing is, is that some of the old ways we've been taught to do our goal setting, if we're repeating the wisdom of either Brian Tracy or Bob Proctor or Napoleon Hill, some of that is actually, quite frankly, it's for a time where artificial intelligence didn't exist, right? It's for a time when we did not have tangible evidence of the breakthroughs in quantum physics. And in a positive crime session, because even in the vision videos version in YouTube, you can watch all of those and you can reshuffle the order of those videos that could be just yours. Your brain will give up the timing and the what and allow the divine to reorganize and orchestrate the resources, the times, the opportunities, the people everything that is required for you to achieve what it is that you want to achieve so long as you're deeply appreciative of the journey you have to be deeply appreciative of the journey and so long as you can stay focused on imagining as if you were in the now there let's just say you want to go to Paris right you have to sit here and imagine the joy, the marvel, the awe that you'll be experiencing as you're eating a croissant sitting in a side cafe. Right? If you can't be in the experience that you want to be in in the future as if you were there now, and salivate over it and hear what you might hear in the streets of Paris. Smell what it is that you might smell. Taste what it is you might. You, I, I promise you the divine timing can't work to your effect, to your benefit, to your advantage, and it doesn't. The more, and I, do you know, it's so funny. I used to have on my live list, I wanted to be able to do community service and I wanted to also have time to spend with my mother doing something that she's always done her entire lifetime, adult lifetime, and that's play mahjong with a group of ladies on a Tuesday. So for a little while, may have been, I don't know, a couple of months, I would imagine what it'd be like and how free I would feel that I had cleared my schedule so that I could go and play mahjong with my mother. I would imagine how my mother, as if she was actually with me here right now, I would see her reaction to me with her playing mahjong with her friends. The pride, the excitement, the anticipation. And I would go and learn a little bit more about Mahjong and I would imagine the tiles and so forth. Anyway, guess what? This year, 
as my mum approaches 80, I thought to myself, now is the time. I could use a thousand excuses. I'm too busy. It happens on a Tuesday. I should be working. Should, 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 should. No, no, Kim, you get to decide. You get to decide are you going to clear your schedule and are you going to go and do that? Is it important enough to you? Is it important enough to you? So you know what the funny thing is, is that I started the exercise that I teach everybody about what it is that we focus on. If we focus on having enough time to do that, which is important to us, we will find the time and we will create the time. Have you all seen this? Um, I'm just going to make it go soon. actually genuinely focused on what was blue or have you all done this before and so you knew I, I saw it and I did it a couple of times okay so did you know that we were going to ask you how many of the pictures had red in them no We absolutely do get what we focus on. And the remarkable aspect of this is we are the ones that give our brains the instructions. And if we don't give our brains the instructions and we allow social media to, whether it's a TikTok reel or it's an Instagram story or it's our friends or it's the media or it's the news or it's our teachers or our therapists or our whatever, we will get what we focus on. We are going to be the only people in our entire lifetimes who actually decide for ourselves what it is that we get to focus on. And if we don't decide, somebody else will decide for us. That's actually the way advertising works. All righty, so... If you'd like to really live what's on your bucket list or have a bucket list that serves you, I actually would prefer that you decide what instructions you're going to give yourself in the morning. Do you want to find the good in others? Do you want to find great opportunities that will allow you to experience more or will ensure that you get to Japan within the next couple of years to see the cherry blossoms? Whatever it is, you are the one that gives yourself the instructions. And then this incredible thing happens and guess what? You're living life and all of a sudden someone says to you, hey, or you see out of the corner of your eye a advertisement for a special tour to Japan, right? Well, what was fascinating was that as I started to plan this year, I literally planned that I would work some extra hours on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Today's Monday for me, by the way, for those of you who are in North America, so that I could take Tuesdays off to do community service and to play Mahjong with my mum. Right. All of a sudden, I, that's what I do on Tuesdays. I can't believe how easy it is. I've done it a couple of weeks. I've absolutely loved it. I'm learning. And I just, I'm thrilled that I get to spend this very precious time with my mum while I can. 
God forbid something had happened to her and she was gone and I regretted it, right? We've all had those moments where we've regretted something and we all get to consciously choose how many more of those moments we will allow ourselves to regret. Some of it is really about what is it that's important to you. So there's a couple of final points I want to make and that is if you cannot be happy with the simple things, you will not be gifted with the opportunities for the big things. Let me say that again. If you can't be perfectly content right here and right now with all that you have, never, ever, ever achieving anything on your bucket list, you cannot be in alignment with achieving anything on your bucket list. Do you want me to say that to you again? People don't get it. You actually have to be absolutely, completely, a thousand percent happy, content, satisfied with the way life is now as if nothing ever changes. Otherwise, you cannot actually be in the vibration when you're actually looking at your bucket list or you're watching a positive prime with all of your bucket list images in there. You just can't possibly be there unless you're in this vibration of complete contentedness, satisfaction and fulfillment the universal God will give you all of the circumstances and situations and people and resources necessary so long as you can feel fulfilled and satisfied and content with life, right? And everything on your bucket list, I promise you, is going to be like this huge, like, um, uh, for lack of a better example, of a word anticlimax. See, it's actually just going to feel, feel fulfilling and satisfying. And it's going to expand your contentment because that's where you're at. Most people go, Oh, I'm going to get some big high when I am sitting eating my croissant and sipping my cup of coffee on a sidewalk in Paris. No, it's going to feel natural. Like it was always meant to be and if that's the feeling you'll know that you actually got it all right so sometimes we have to trick our vibration our bodies our innate intelligence into this right and so last week I actually had to um eat my own humble pie no I mean I had to walk my own talk and I went for a walk on my own beach that's just down the road. They're my feet. And um, I was actually on Skype in a meeting with Mayumi. And this is what I was looking at. And I then said, hey, call me back on WhatsApp and I'll turn the video on and I'll actually show you exactly what I'm looking at. And we talked about how I was there because I wanted to experience working a moment of work whilst I was in the pure playfulness of my feet. Gosh, the water was warm, warmer than I expected. Um, it was so peaceful. It was late in the afternoon. There were some people swimming. You can see there's one person swimming. But this is my beach and they were my feet. Anyway, so my Amy said, I'll take a photo, Kim. Because often the simplest things, they give us just this profound sense of joy. We miss but that is when the universe gives us more moments of profound sense and joy. And then just before I go, there's one here, um, which is a slide that I give to my coaching clients. And I really belated this point last week. So I just wanted to make sure that it was absolutely embedded. If you want to have social relationships or meaningful relationships, romantic relationships or um, relationships at work or with your clients that are truly amazing and you actually want either your clients or your lover or your best friend to be for example reliable or whatever patient or whatever if you aren't it first you won't attract it you've got to be it to allow others, you've got to be the role model for it. 
And so I have, I have this and I have this in various different forms. And usually at the beginning of the day, I'll say thank you for helping me to be loving and forgiving and contributing and magnifying and enhancing a leader, a role model, a shining example, awesome, fantastic. But I allow myself to really stop and look at that. And what I'm presuming is that the universe, my God, my guides, my guardians, my angels, um, they're going to actually provide for me moments through the day where I am going to be fantastic or I'm going to be excellent. Now, some days I actually fail at being my beautiful divine self. Or I don't really have days, entire days. I have moments or hours. And so loving and forgiving go hand in hand for me because often I have to just be forgiving of myself. But it allows me to be a lot more compassionate towards others. When others quite frankly, uh, who I wish them to be. I've just got to be forgiving of them being at their worst or at their not best, right? And that that for me has been one of the real tricks of my entire life. So that's it. That's a final note. And for those of you who want to take advantage um, of that special offer, please feel free to do so. There are actually only ever 20... Um, packages available in my schedule. I can't accommodate any more than um, 20 people at a time. So sometimes there's a waiting list. Um, and I think um, this price, Mayumi um, said we were only allowed to offer 20 a month. So if you want six coaching sessions for the price of one, um, then it's definitely something you want to get uh, your hands on. If you want your own vision video, that's what I've started to call it, that's still the positive prime um, uh, formula, but available to you via YouTube, then we can create one for you. It's like a concierge service. And I would do this if you're the kind of person who's a, yeah, 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 I'm definitely going to upload all my photographs in positive prime. I'm definitely going to personalize. But if you don't get around to it, um, I feel super sad for you because you need your other than consciousness. You need the ocean of pink food dye to be working for you, right? And if you want to get started in that process for what is your vision video, then if I was you, I'd be spending five bucks. That's it. Now we've been through part one and part two. I'm really open to mm, feedback, suggestions, recommendations, anything you want to share with us. Um, you can either do it privately or send me an email or have a conversation with me. Um, I love doing this. I hope that it's been useful for you. Are there any comments you want to make to me whilst we're at it? And this, this is quite frankly, it's, I've never seen another transformational leader ever explain it like this. And I have lots of other transformational leaders who've asked if they can borrow this analogy. And absolutely, yes, so long as you credit me, because um, the universe chose me to actually have this message come through. But it is all about the pink food dye. It's all about what goes into your ocean of consciousness, the it, look, from a science point of view, it's epigenetics, um, but we need another two hours to talk about epigenetics and what the scientific research is saying about epigenetics with respect to um, everything from stem cell treatment to nutritional dietitians' recommendations to exercise physiology, routines to you name it. Um, epigenetics is, is um, I think it might actually be where it's all at um where it's all at those of us who um might stand beside somebody who's exactly the same of us or so we would think in the same environment and we have our genes expressed differently um and yet we might have two people who are exactly the same in completely different environments who who actually um yeah i don't know why that just expired that was just weird all right, so who would like to share something with me? Hey, Kim, I have a question. So back, or back early on when you were talking about the sessions and about the three minutes, I mean, I've been doing the three minutes. Um, and, I, you know, I told myself that I was getting back into it this year, which I've which I've been doing. So you said on the 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 pictures that have the words, don't concentrate on it. Just let it go. Just let it flow. Okay. 
Because I guess I was trying to, I mean, I was watching it and it's like, I would, you know, if there might be one whole phrase and my, and I, my brain would pick a specific word or something, you know? Yeah. And unfortunately, um, depending upon how much social media you've been exposed to in the previous couple of hours and, or um, you've been at a social function where there's some bitching and moaning and groaning or whatever, a cup of coffee with a friend, whatever, um, how you've been primed um, will depend on whether you argue with the statements that you see. So if they're actually flowing um, kind of like through you, you're actually, particularly if you say to yourself, and I do, like I'll often watch a positive prime and I'll be like, you know, um, I, I mean, I talk to my angels probably more than anyone, whether it's God or, but I feel like I talk to my angels and I'll say, um, uh, would you allow for all of this and something even better that's actually in the best interests of my higher self and my health to become reality in ways that are graceful and easy and simple and quick. And I am really and truly the example of um, most of the things on my bucket list becoming reality without me even trying. I've kind of just, I've been gently guided and I've made one decision that has revealed something and it's then become visible to me and I go like, oh, wow, wow, oh, wow. Like I chose this particular itinerary for this cruise last year. Um, what's amazing about me, um, and maybe this is just hilarious, but I didn't uh, research some of the stops in the itinerary because they didn't stand out to me. And yet when we were approaching that port, there was a great historian or a, you know, great political commentator on board doing these speeches. And I used to go and watch them and I'd be like, Oh my good Lord. I cannot believe like I did not even, I didn't consciously choose to go to Ephesus but so many of my spiritual experiences have been about Ephesus and I find myself in Ephesus. But weirdly, we'd become friends on the boat with some people. Americans, funnily enough, um, a group of six of them, and they had hired a private guide and they, they had two more spots in their little minivan for this really special experience for this particular day. And it was, um, it was actually to go to this factory where they made these Turkish silk rugs. And the guy who now runs this business had Turkish parents but is an Australian and did his master's in textile design at a university in Australia who ended up then being a contact for me and super amazing and part of one of my other businesses. It could never have happened. Like I'm not smart enough to have organized that. That was the quantum field organizing that for me. That's probably what I want everybody to understand more. When you are just in awe of the everyday simple things and you allow and you give up the how, but you make constant progress, one one beautiful percent improvement per day that feels comfortable to you you will be on the path to experience that which is on your bucket list and if it's not what is in the best interest of your higher self it actually won't occur it won't happen it's not meant to it's truth all righty Anything else? Has this been useful? Just tell me, was it worth showing up for the first one? Was it worth showing up for the second one for those of you who have come to both? Yes. Yes. Yes? 
Yeah. Okay. Can I have a comment? Pardon? I have a comment. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Um. Well, first, I I want to thank you for your perspective because it's always, um, different and more global and just more encompassing. But I have to say that um, when you talked about seeing years ago, it was like see yourself in the picture of what you want to accomplish, be, do, and have. But in in your particular way of expressing it, it really was. I felt more of an immersion, of like actually being in there, living there, breathing, and becoming a part of what it is you truly desire, not just thinking about it from the head, but more from the heart and from the spirit and so on. And um, also um, the rules, you know, <laughs> I got to address those rules because I've always had the rule of, um, you know, if I don't look a certain way, how could I be successful? Why would anyone want to listen to me in that particular the health field, for example, right? And you have an overweight doctor. Well, hello, you know, but then I think of Oprah. When you brought that up, it reminded me that she was totally successful and she was up and down like a yo-yo all over the place all the time, but she did not let that define her. That wasn't her identity. Even though she she talks about having issues in her mind, she didn't let it stop or, or, or keep her back. But um, so I really enjoyed it. Can I offer, can I offer you another perspective just on that point? Cause it's, it feels pertinent. There is an argument and a theory and a fair bit of evidence to suggest that it was a strategic choice of Oprah's because more of her audience connected with her. Mm. Right. So had she been super skinny, uh, she would have alienated the majority of her audience and she became a billionaire with power and influence because of the size of her audience. Mm. She was yeah. actually in alignment. Oh. Um, I have a client that I coach here in Australia who was a very, 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 very overweight lady who had a lot of health complications and she went back and studied and qualified as an exercise physiologist and she has a thriving business as a fitness coach helping other people like her who are too afraid to go to the gym and end up with a personal trainer who can in no way comprehend what someone really feels like and what they're embarrassed about if they've never experienced it. And so it's really interesting because her business is so fabulous because the majority of her clients feel like she understands them and she's not going to judge them and they don't feel too afraid to exercise even though they're breathless walking mm. 500 metres, right? There is magnificence and magic in that kind of health professional who will not make other people feel wrong or bad because they're not perfect but want to improve, even if they never, ever, ever, ever can get to whatever perfection is, which is just a joke. I mm. mean, anyway, don't get me started. Um, I am a qualified exercise physiologist and osteopath, right? And I have trained all sorts of people. I incorporate all of those principles in what it is that I do. I still go and see a chiropractor like you, Dr. Catherine, because I know the world and life knocks me out of alignment. And I have to get back into energetic alignment. And it's best if I actually go to somebody who does it all day, every day. And so Dr. Michaela to me is just this precious gem. I'll go to her. I'll spend $66, which is what it cost me for 15 minutes. She'll, and I'm great. I'm realigned. That doesn't mean it lasts. It means I need to go for a tuna, a refinement, uh, you know. So what I have discovered is that so many people in their ego, particularly practitioners, think that they don't need to go and see other practitioners anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And they have all these judgments about their fellow practitioners. There's a lot of political nastiness in all of these fields. Like, oh, I was actually laughing the other day at these comments from somebody who's spiritual, talking about somebody else who's spiritual. And I was like, 
both of you are the worst example of enlightened I know of at the moment. And here I was being a judgment of that. And I'm having a laugh at myself because I'm like, oh my golly gosh. So anyway, um, I do want to encourage you to look at your rules, your rules for everything, by the way. Yes. Um, you know, society has a rule about getting married. I actually got married for the first time. I was a first time bride um, when I was 50, right? I used to think all sorts of things about being unmarried throughout my 20s and 30s. I used to make it mean that no one wanted to love me enough to spend a lifetime with me, so there must be something terribly wrong with me. And I know that all of you are here and you know that there's nothing wrong with me. I'm wonderful and fabulous and gorgeous and excellent and fun and think, you know, but I had to own that before Cameron then became the absolutely perfect right man for me. And I had... And I actually think that God physically made him like poof, he just like appeared out of nowhere and God gave him memories. So he thought he had a lifetime, but actually he was just made for me, right? Perfectly at the right time. And, and you know what? He saw everything in me that I had started to see in me and cultivate in me. And ultimately we end up getting married. Awesome. Right. Um, now being married isn't important to some people, but it was to me. And so long as I, and I've, I think I've said this a hundred times over the last four hours, you have to decide what's important to you and release everybody else's blah about what they think is important for you. Hmm. You hmm. have to decide what's important to you. And then you have to basically leverage the power of neuroscience to make it happen for you and the quantum field, right? So upload those personal photographs into your positive prime sessions, watch them on varying speeds, allow them to reshuffle, pour more pink food, die into your ocean of consciousness, you know, come out as a singing and dancing pink iceberg, right? Sounds great. Love you That's all. another question, Kim, on your on the photos. Does it matter how old the photos are that, that you upload? No, not at all. I've got okay. photos of me as a child. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. So long as the photo really and truly makes you feel fabulous about you or there's meaning for you that's empowering to you. Meaning is, oh, God, I need another two hours to talk about meaning. I'll, I'm going to give you an example. You know, last week I actually showed you the photograph that was um, me graduating from college, from university, with my degree. And I told you all that um, I see that photo and I think, wow, I finish what I started. That's my identity. I finish what I start. Now, some therapists once said, and I think Tony Robbins probably said it, and Deepak Chopra probably said it, so many people who have that identity, I finished what I started, don't get started. They're the worst procrastinators on the planet Earth because they don't want to let themselves down by not finishing something that they haven't yet started, right? So it's a double-edged sword. It's all a double-edged sword. But anyway, what if when I looked at that photo, what I saw was the inadequate incompetent, inappropriate student that I was that was the whole reason why it was so very, very hard for me to actually graduate from business school because I was like one of those students who was most likely to not show up to class to, I don't know what I was doing, but I don't know, being too involved in social activities. Um, did I not have enough respect for my lecturers did I not have enough respect for myself or my parents or whatever so the meaning that we associate with anything is actually one of the really big pieces of work that we do on our own personal development journey this is this whole rules thing so um you know if Cameron makes me a cup of tea he he shows me he loves me if Cameron buys me a gift, he shows that he loves me. 
if Cameron lets me sleep in when he knows I really need to sleep in, he shows he loves me. Those 1,001 if-thens are the meanings that we make there around our rules and we will notice that all of our disappointments come from expectations that we have of others because they're not showing they're not actually following our rules right we can actually completely shift that just by shifting our rules and some people go oh no but you know my rules have integrity maybe that's why i said we need another two hours <laughs> we need another two hours for a workshop on rules and meaning um i think that we better stop right there otherwise we will go on and on and on um, for those of you who have already organized for yourself coaching and healing, I'm very excited for you. And um, I can't wait. I can't wait to actually have more. Hey, guess what? This was on my live list and I've accomplished it and it was extraordinary. Those kinds of posts within the, you know, change makers group. Hey, all righty. So if you haven't commented in the change makers group, um, recently please do so if you um, need the link Mamie can put the link in here for you or somebody else can anything else anything else before we run away no no the special offer link is there the Facebook group link is everybody in that Facebook group anyway fantastic uh anything else no we're out and um for those of you who need a little love today know that you are actually loved you are divinely held and nothing you could ever do that could be wrong or bad would ever stop that <laughs>